In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of maximum power transfer to a load resistance. To do so, we're going to take a Thevenin equivalent circuit, attach a load to that equivalent circuit, and then ask ourselves, how do we get the most power, or how can we, what, under what circumstances will we get the most voltage delivered to the load, or what does it take to get as much current to that load as possible? Well, if our, if our uh, intention is to get as much of the circuit's voltage delivered to the load as we can, we recognize that R7 and, and R sub L are in series with each other and we have a voltage divider in play here. We get the, the larger R sub L is, the greater the voltage delivered to R sub L will be. And so if we're trying to maximize the voltage, we want R sub L to be as much larger than R7 and than our thevenin as we can get it. On the other hand, if our intention is to maximize the current, then by making R sub L small as possible, we will maximize the current. So R sub L big, we maximize voltage. R sub L small, we maximize current. Well, what about power? Power is, after all, equal to I times V. And we have conflicting uh, conflicting criteria here. So how does that reflect itself in the power? Well, we know that power is equal to I times V, and we know that the current flowing in this circuit right here, I is equal to V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin plus R sub L. Further, we know that in a resistor, power is equal to I squared times R. So let's take this current expression and plug it into our power. And when we do, we get that power delivered to the load is equal to I squared, where there, here's our expression for I, V Thevenin over R Thevenin plus R sub L plus R sub L, that's I squared times R sub L. Let's bring the uh, V seven and squared term out in front since it's a constant, and we then get the expression for power is equal to V seven and squared times R sub L divided by R seven and plus R sub L quantity squared. Let's look at this function here as a graph, where in this graph we've got R sub L along the horizontal axis and we're plotting power as a function of R sub L. As we can see from the expression for, p for power, if R sub L equals zero, the power will be zero. And that stands to re reason. If R sub L is zero, there will be no power delivered to the load. But as R sub L increases, the power also increases, and it continues to increase up to a certain value of R sub L. Beyond that value of R sub L, the power then starts to drop off. This then begs the question, well, what value of R sub L will make or will give us this optimal power transfer to the load? Let's take a look at it here and start by, re by re rewriting our uh, expression for P. P as a function of R sub L then is equal to V Thevenin squared times R sub L over R Thevenin plus R sub L quantity squared. We know that we maximize, or we can find the value of R sub L where this is a maximum by taking the derivative of P with respect to R sub L or the partial of P with respect to R sub L and then setting that derivative equal to zero. So looking at the function P, we have R sub L in the numerator and R sub L in the, de and R sub L in the denominator. And so we have the quotient of two different functions and we need to use the quotient rule. The quotient rule says that the derivative of one thing divided by another thing is equal to the denominator multiplied by the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator divided by 
the denominator squared. In this case here, we have um, u, let's do it over here, get it out of the way, u is equal to the numerator r sub l, v, the denominator, is going to be r thevenin plus r sub l quantity squared. So differentiating both of those with respect to r sub l, we get then du is equal to 1, and dv is equal to 2 times r thevenin plus r sub l. All right, using these, plugging them into the quotient formula to give us the partial of p with respect to l, we get then v times du, well, v is r thevenin plus r sub l, quantity squared, times du, which is 1, minus u, which is r sub l, times dv, which is 2 times r thevenin plus r sub l. It takes care of the numerator, and then in the denominator we have v squared, which is r thevenin plus r sub l, quantity squared, squared, or raised to the fourth power. Alrighty, there's our derivative. We now need to set that equal to zero. And when we set that equal to zero, we realize then that this derivative will equal zero when the numerator equals zero, or r thevenin plus r sub l squared minus two r sub l times r thevenin plus r sub l equals zero. We see that we have a factor of r thevenin plus r sub l in both of these two terms. Let's take it out. We have then r thevenin plus r sub l times r thevenin plus r sub l minus 2 r sub l. And that equals 0. So we have two factors multiplied together equaling 0. Either this first one equals 0 or the second one does. Let's look first at the first one. What would it take for r thevenin plus r sub l to equal 0? Well, that would mean that r thevenin equals negative r sub l. And we know that can't be. There's no such thing as negative resistance. So that first factor gives us an extraneous root. The second one is r thevenin plus r sub l minus 2 r sub l. So this term here then is r thevenin minus r sub l equals 0 or r thevenin equals r sub l is the situation or what we were looking for to give us maximum power transfer. In other words, when r sub l equals r thevenin, we will find that we transfer as much power to the load as is possible. So how much power can we transfer? If we let r thevenin, or if we let r sub l equal r thevenin, let's come back up here to our power expression, and now substituting in r thevenin for r sub l, we're going to call it p max, then is equal to v thevenin squared times r sub l, but we're going to let it equal r thevenin, divided by r thevenin plus r thevenin quantity squared. Well, that's equal to v thevenin squared times r thevenin over 2r thevenin squared. This r thevenin and one of those r thevenins will cancel. The 2 gets squared also. And we're left with then p max, the maximum power transferred, will be v thevenin squared divided by 4 r thevenin. Alrighty, let's take a look at an example to see just what's happening here. Let's assume that V thevenin equals, uh, well, let's say 10 volts. And let's say that R thevenin equals 50 ohms. P max then, for these circumstances, will be equal to V thevenin squared, so that's 
10 squared divided by 4 times r theven, and r theven is 50. So we have 10 squared divided by 4 times 50 is uh, 100 divided by 200, or 1 half watt would be the maximum amount of power that a circuit with a Thevenin equivalent voltage of 10 volts and a Thevenin equivalent resistance of 50 ohms would be able to deliver to the load resistor. And that maximum power transfer would occur when R sub L equaled V Thevenin. Any other value of R sub L, greater or less, will result in less than the maximum power being transferred to the load.